Okay, it's Bob Frizzell for The Reality Game. And today's talk is about from bitterness to forgiveness. It's not easy to let go of really strong emotions involving mostly to do with relationships because the energy is involved in really bad interactions. No one knows how to deal with them. Do they? Well, a lot of people, when they get involved with people who they think are What do you want to call them? Well, they're relationships. And if they're long-term relationships, or even if they're short and intense, they have a lot of emotions. And if things go badly in the relationship, then the memory that often is the first memory of the particular person that the relationship was about is a bad emotion, a bad emotion. So where does the bitterness come from? Mostly because in these situations, you were getting something from the other person. And now you aren't, and you feel like they owe you something. Now, the way the situation was at the time, it didn't seem like you were, you know, it's maybe it was, felt like it was a give and take or a partnership, even a group thing. But this is the way these relationships are. Even when you're contributing something or a lot of the things, you're expecting to get something back from the others. And when it all is finished, um, if you're wise, you'll realize that you were getting something from the others. If you're not wise, you're going to blame the other one 100% for the problem. A wise person will say, how much involvement is it of mine? And it's going to be something. It's going to be something. So the bitterness comes in because there's a lot of negative emotions which are low vibrational emotions. Is it your fault? It's your responsibility to respond by learning about these kind of things and then working through them. And are you going to be able to figure it out on your own? Uh, most people need a lot of self-help books. Some people actually need other people to help them with these things and if there's no one in your particular group that's wise and you haven't picked up on any self-help that's applicable or you've got blinders on this stuff is like a ticking time bomb it's waiting for a detonator to bring it back into your consciousness again. Sometimes people that look like someone who was in a relationship with you are going to trigger you. Sometimes it's maybe something someone says. Maybe you can't really figure out what it was, but it triggers something. And sometimes you don't even know because it could be a bunch of things, a huge cascade effect of multiple different situations. People a lot, of, a lot of the times call them trauma, traumatic relationships, traumatic situations. And they all they need is a trigger for them to come up. Now, what happens when they come up? Um, you can either deal with them if you are wise to what they are. But if you are 
not awake to these situations, uh, you might repress the emotion because you don't want to be embarrassed by having something come out. You might suppress your emotions a lot. Uh, or you might find yourself getting very emotional. Uh, or it might be a delayed reaction. You might have something that triggers you and then it might be later on when you're in the grocery store, you're picking up some bananas, something totally unrelated and the whole thing will hit you. How do you process these old emotions, these old stuck emotions? You process them by being present in the present moment and feeling them icky as they often are, painful as they often are. At some point, you have to process them. Or if somebody else comes along who is nothing to do with the situation, but they feel your energy and they're someone who does this kind of work, they might process it for you. Will you know who did it? Not necessarily. Will you know that it's been done? Possibly because all of a sudden you might feel better not knowing why. How many people on the planet are going around processing this kind of stuck emotions? Um, can't say not too many. But the problem is there is way more stuck emotion than the few people that are on the planet who can process these things. They have to have what's known as an open heart. In other words, they've gone deeply into their own shit and dealt with it over a matter of many, many years. And it's not fun for those people to deal with your stuck emotions because they feel icky for the other person. Nevertheless, it gets done because they can do it. Some people say, well, you can have a shield. And I talked about this last week in a talk about in 5D people having shields so that um, this kind of stuff bounces off. Uh, it's not 5D right now. It's 4D and the stuff is sloughing around to be dealt with. Is it fair? Uh, it's not a question of fair or not. It has to be done because we are a collective, the human collective, and it is ascension time, and it is time for us to move to higher vibrations. All this old stuff, it's not even necessarily your stuff. Some of the stuff can be from your ancestors that never got dealt with. It's There's so much stuff in the collective that needs to be processed and as I said, very few people actually do the work. So all the rest of the people are ticking time bombs looking for triggers. They're not actively looking for triggers. They're just, you know, they're just ready to go, ready to go, ready to go. So if you're watching this, you, may be, you might be one of those people who, who do feel other people's emotions, sometimes known as empaths. Or it might be something you're going to be called to do. Everyone, sooner or later, is going to be called to process this stuff. No one gets a free ride. I've read different things about Ascension Time when some people are here just for the free ride to ascend. No, this is wrong. It is put out by people who are irresponsible. It's irresponsible to slough off your share of dealing with old stuck emotions from your own life. And this stuff that's come before you, you inherited. You inherited a world where there's all kinds of infrastructure here. There's all kinds of electrical plants and uh, highways and waterworks and buildings. And maybe you were born in a hospital. All that stuff are good things. Other people did for you who might have passed on. So it's not like, you know, you never got anything from them. You got a lot of stuff that you inherited. But we also inherited stuff that didn't get processed when these people kicked the bucket. It's all got to be done because we have to raise our frequency. There's not if, 
it's the time. So, in a nutshell, you process this stuff by being very present in the present moment and feeling it and, you know, there's different modalities of healing that you can learn. Energy healing, um, there's a, all kinds of things you can look into. But if none of that stuff's available, you process it through your own body. And nobody wants to do it because it feels gross. It feels gross and it reminds you of things that you already dealt with in your own life. It keeps coming back. The stuff has been dealt with, but it's similar energies to stuff you've already done. And it's somebody else's. It's called being of service. Service to the group. In other words, the planet. The payoff is once we get all of this stuff processed and we get everyone vibrating at a higher frequency, all of the crappy things that go on the planet, murder, etc., etc., will become very rare. It's unprocessed stuff that we've got now that makes all of the horrible, horrible nightly news every day. So... On the bright side, more and more people are working on this stuff. More and more people are talking about it. And the children that come in, it seems like the children are going to be big helpers because they're just light. They don't seem to be carrying the emotional burdens that people, older generations, had. So, educate yourself, be present. And learn about the scale of human consciousness. Uh, and so you can figure out, what am I feeling? Is it a good vibe or a bad vibe? The scale of human consciousness is available on the internet. Just look for it with your search engine. I'm Bob Frizzell. That's your update.